Number 40. An eagle is flying horizontally at a speed of 3 meters per second when the fish in her talons wiggles loose and falls into the lake 5 meters below. Calculate the velocity of the fish relative to the water when it hits the water. All right, so here's a picture. Initially, the uh, eagle is flying at a speed of 3 meters per second horizontally. It's going to then drop uh, this uh, fish right from its talons and it's going to take this trajectory on down, all right? And it's going to fall a total, in terms of the Y displacement, uh, fall a total of five meters, all right? So now we got to calculate the velocity of the fish relative to the water. Now remember, they don't, they're not asking for X velocity. They're not asking for Y velocity. They're asking for velocity. So what that means is that we're essentially finding the resultant velocity, okay? Now, if we're finding the resultant velocity, we have to know both the X and Y components at the end of the problem, all right? So let's start writing some stuff down. So let's take this as the initial set of conditions, and let's take this as the final set of conditions. Now let's look purely in the Y component, all right? So the initial velocity in the Y direction, what would it be? Well, since the fish was moving horizontally at zero, there is no vertical or uh, displacement to it at all, and it's not moving up and down, so therefore the velocity there is zero. What is now the final velocity in the y direction? Well, that's what we're actually going to be looking for. Uh, how long does it take for the fish to fall the five meters? I have no clue, so that also we don't know. But we do know that the fish will fall five meters, right? So the change in the fish's, the, the, um, fish's displacement will be negative 5.00 meters per second. Why is it negative? Because the final value is less than the initial value. So when you think about yf minus yi, if this value is less than this value, therefore that value overall when you do the subtraction must be negative. Okay, great. And uh, the acceleration, what's the acceleration in the y direction? Negative 9.80 meters per second squared. Wunderbar. Now, how do we solve for this? If I know uh, the initial velocity in the y, displacement, and I know the acceleration, well, it looks like I would choose equation number four here, right? On the upper right-hand side. So let's write it down. The final velocity in the y, in the y direction squared will equal the initial velocity in the y direction squared plus two times the acceleration in the y direction multiplied by the displacement in the y direction. Okay, so let's plug in the value. So the final velocity in the y squared, that's what we're looking for, is equal to zero squared plus two times now negative 9.80 multiplied by negative 5.00. So the final velocity in the y direction squared will be equal to, so we got two times negative 9.8 times negative five, and beautiful works out to be 98. Okay, so we got 98. And now I gotta take the square root of both sides to get rid of the square. So the final velocity in the y direction, now remember, anytime you take the square root, it becomes, you get a plus and minus answer. So negative square root of 98. And we get a value of 9.90. 9.90. Now, which value is it? Is it positive or negative? Remember, what direction is it traveling? It's traveling downwards. It's traveling in the negative y direction. Therefore, the velocity will be negative. All right, perfect. So let's just clean this thing up. Let's get rid of the negative and the positive sign. Just plug in the negative, and this is now our answer. Negative 9.9 .9 meters per second. Okay, that is the velocity in the y direction. Now, what's the velocity in the x direction? Now, first, we don't have to go through crazy calculations here. Are there, is there any acceleration in the x direction? No, right? There is no acceleration in the x direction in this problem. It's a free fall problem. Therefore, no accelerations in the x direction are being experienced by the fish. What that means is that the initial velocity then in the x direction will be equal to then the final velocity, final velocity in the x direction. What's the initial in the x? Well, that's the three. So I actually do know the final velocity in the x. So the final velocity in the x direction will be equal to, that x looks like a y, let me change that. It'll equal 3.00 meters per second. Okay, great. So now I have my y component, my x component, and now I can solve for my resultant velocity. So simply draw a coordinate system. Let's draw a new coordinate system right here. And let's plug in the components of that. Okay, so let's do the x component. And it said it's three, great. So here's the 3.00 meters per second. The Y component here was negative 9.9 .9 
right? So let's draw that in. Negative means it's pointing downward, right? So this is now negative 9.90. And then the resultant vector now will be this from the start to the end, okay? So I just connect those two points basically, and voila. Well, that's a little crooked. Let's straighten it out a little bit. Oh, come on, autocorrect. No, that's good enough. All right, so what we're looking for here is the resultant velocity, okay? So how do we do that? Pythagorean's theorem we can use, right? That would be fine. I can also use the shortcut formula that's basically already uh, reworked. So I can say that my velocity, my resultant velocity here, should be equal to the square root of the sum of all the x values squared plus the sum of all the y values squared. Now there's only one x and there's only one y, so we don't have to worry about summing anything, but that's the formula we use. So the x value is 3.00 squared plus then negative 9.90. Make sure you're careful with the parentheses there and that's squared. So now let's just plug it in. Let's find out what the resultant velocity should be. So we get a value, so second square root of three squared um, plus, right, negative 9.9 .9 squared. So 10.3. So it comes out to 10.3 meters per second. That is the uh, resultant velocity. This is the answer. Calculate the velocity of the fish relative to the water when it hits the water. Now we could also solve for the angle. Didn't really ask that, but just take a look at the picture, guys. If I want to solve this angle, all I need to do is do a tangent calculation. Here's the opposite side, here's the adjacent side, and just go about finding that. All right, so that should uh, conclude this question. Thank you for joining me. I hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe and tell your friends. Thanks.